It is time to pull these 6000 EXs off the wall and install the 6000 XPs. Let's get into it. The first thing here, open up the XPs. Beautiful, look really cool. Uh, I used to really like the, the look of the uh, these guys here, but after I've seen the new style, it's great. Now here's the problem. I was thinking all I've got to do is take these three inverters, pop them off the wall and put the other ones in place. But this is the size difference of the two inverters, right? Um, it doesn't exactly fit one to one. So if I'm going to maintain the same spacing, I'll put these here. Hopefully you can see this. Then I've got, I don't have the same, like I'll, I won't have eight inches. I think it's 7.9 inches or something like that. I won't have eight inches between each one. So what I've got to do is figure out how far over here I can move these guys, which means basically I've got to take this charge verter off the wall and then I've got to reposition all of that. Now, what I was trying to avoid doing was actually having my inverter on top of the battery cabinet here. I don't really think it's a problem. I just don't like having to reach over it. Now, after I've had this over here, I can easily reach across and I can flip the breakers and I can do what I need to do. So it's really not that big of a deal. I think I'll be able to easily come over here and, and adjust this inverter. The only problem is I might have issues having enough room underneath it to run the wires that I need to run. We'll figure that out. But with that being the case, I'm probably gonna have to step it up just a bit, make them a little bit higher. One other consideration is I don't actually have to have these guys anymore, which is really great because the switch gear and the breakers are actually built right into this unit, which saves a lot of money. These guys are actually pretty expensive. And so I can remove this one, which I don't like being over here. I've got it taped up, um, but I didn't have a box for it. This one, I purchased the box with it. I can remove those, but here's the problem. I've already cut these guys to splice in the breaker. So my lug is up here and I've got um, basically a busted cable in between. So I've got to figure out how to take care of that. As I'm talking through this, I'm realizing that I do have this box of these Polaris um, splicing kits that I had initially planned to use uh, as the direct burial, but realizing that they are definitely not watertight and I didn't want to try to deal with that, so I used a different product. But these would actually do a great job of splicing in between here. I'll just tape them up real good and allow me to continue with the length that I have. And I can pull these guys out to use them for a different product or project or sell them or just stick them on the shelf or whatever. But that'll clean this up an awful lot, not having all of these. Once again, the reason that these are in position is because uh, these are the battery cables for those who are new to this whole setup battery cables that connect to these this bus bar here and one on the other side and then I've got my positive cables coming out my negative cables coming out the positive cables run through the breakers and that allows me to actually isolate the batteries from the units themselves now as mentioned the 6000 XP actually has the circuit interrupters inside the uh, the unit itself which like I said is a huge cost advantage with all that in mind, you will notice on some people's setups, they will actually run the, the positives to a bus bar. So you'll have, you know, a red coming out here, a red coming out, and a red coming out, and then that'll go to a bus bar, and then you'll have a larger cable that'll actually run over here. Uh, I like that idea. It would actually clean things up quite a bit, but um, I'd have to buy another bus bar. And I would also, I believe I would have to have a larger cable here. So since I've already got it, I'm going to go ahead and run with just keeping dedicated cables running all the way. One thing to keep in mind is that you want to have the same length cables that are going. So I actually have cable like tucked back behind this cabinet here. So all of these are, are pretty much the same length. Unfortunately, this guy here is a little bit longer. So whenever I shift everything over and put my unit one here, two, and three, I think that's gonna give me a little bit extra length so that I can basically cut this guy right here and then splice it back over here, shortening this positive cable 
to the length of the other positive cables. And I think that's gonna actually give me a better system. We're gonna have to figure out what to do with the charge inverter. I don't know exactly how we're gonna do that one yet. I might stick it over here on the wall somewhere. I might stick it up here. I don't know. I wanna keep it over on this side. The reason why is because my generator will sit right out here whenever I'm using it outside on the porch. And then I'm going to have a plug that the generator, well, let's see, this guy is going to plug into a plug that will be right here. And then on the other side, that will run to a cable that will plug into the generator. And why do I actually use a charge inverter? Some of you guys might not know, most of you probably do, but I'll cover it anyway. The charge inverter is basically a way to turn AC power, dirty AC power, which you get from these generators, you know, vibrating all over the place. And of course, that's not exactly why it's dirty, but just think about a bad, dirty signal of electricity coming in. If you put dirty electricity into an inverter as your AC input, what you're going to end up doing is uh, frying your, your inverter. That is, according to EG4 or Signature Solar, they say that is one of the primary causes of their inverter failures. So while there is a dedicated generator port on this one, I don't think I'm actually going to use it because of that. Now, if I had a fancier generator that actually had an inverter on the generator, which some of you guys may have, then in that case, I would run it directly into that AC input and I would avoid the charge verter, which is going to uh, remove some of the efficiency and will actually lose some in, in, in converting from AC to DC. So what is another primary reason to have the charge verter in your system? If you have a generator that only puts out 120 volts and doesn't have a 240 volt plug on it, then unfortunately with the 6000 EXs and the 6000 XPs, you can't actually charge through AC on just 120 volts. You have to have both legs. So with the charge verter, you can plug this into a 240 or 120 volt system and you can use that 120 volts Stick with me. You can use 120 volts to actually output DC to 48 volts and charge your batteries. Well, it'd be a little bit higher than 48 volts, but it will charge a 48 volt DC system from 120 volts. So we will figure out where to put that and we'll do that another time, but that's gonna have to come off the wall. All the wiring is gonna be disconnected. We will pull these guys off the wall, set them aside, and then we're gonna put templates on the wall to figure out where the, uh, the new inverters are going to go. Got them off the wall. Now I need to get these guys out of the way. Then I'm going to put marks on the wall with the template, figure out exactly where we want them, and then start drilling holes. Hopefully have them hung up here in a little bit. So I'm using these self-tapping screws, which are super handy, especially when you're going through this hardy board and then going into plywood or whatever else is back there. So they're great and um, they're really strong. I'll show you, this is what I'm using. It's because this is what I have on the shelf. All right. I should really do this with someone else. I'm gonna go for it. They're actually a lot lighter than the uh, the other ones were. All right, y'all, so this is probably a, a, a very bad idea for me to be doing this by myself. I'm gonna go ahead and let it roll for a little bit. You can skip ahead to 1348 if you would like to skip it. It's actually kind of funny to watch though. Um, yeah, I definitely wouldn't recommend this. Please, please, please do it with somebody else. Uh, don't take this as me saying, yeah, just, just do it. All right, have fun. So I wanted to point out one of the problems that I'm having here is the fact that the, the holes on the inverters mm. are slotted in the vertical position. And so the, the inverter was actually sliding down on the, the bottom right one that I'd gotten into the wall. And that was causing uh, problems where I couldn't actually get the, the, 
the drill up into it because it was there just wasn't enough clearance and then also once it slid down then the holes at the top of the inverter disappeared so i had to lift it up and screw it in and stain on the bucket and all this stuff it was We're getting closer. All right. All right, that was a pain in the butt. Don't try to do that by yourself. That was stupid, but I um, got it up. It's secure. Got those guys in. Those, oh, look at that. I actually left the bit right there on it. There we go. Okay, aside from Aside from all the smudges on that thing, uh, I like the way it looks. It's huge though, man. You might not think so because you haven't been in a barn here with me most likely, unless you have been, which could be weird, but it's so much bigger. Now, I'm hoping that 
I'm hoping that this isn't going to be too high. Like, I mean, it's not bad. I can reach it and everything, but I, I just hope that it doesn't have like a weird like viewing angle that I need to be looking straight at it in order to see it. So we'll, we'll see once we get it going. But it's like 10 o'clock and I need to wake up at 5 in the morning. So I'm probably going to call it quits here. But we got it up and that's going to be the end of this video for this go around. But um, thanks for joining me. I'm excited about the rest of this stuff. Hopefully you are as well. Um, if you're interested in the LV, the LV6540, why am I going with that one? If you're interested in the 6000 XP or any of the other stuff that over at Signature Solar, check out my affiliate link in the description below. As you know, I had issues with my 6000 EXs, but uh, I have high hopes for this one. I've talked to installers who've been putting them in. They're really excited about it. Um, a lot of people who've been putting them up, they're excited about them. I'm excited. I think it's going to be great. Um, can't recommend it yet, but... I think it's going to be awesome. So anyway, I'd love for you to use the affiliate links in the description below if you're going to buy anything from Signature Solar. Uh, otherwise, um, I'll see you on the next video. Check out this one here or this one over here. Both are going to be great. You're going to love it. And we'll talk to you there.